Hi everyone, I'm Christina. I'm a STEAM program specialist for Girl Scouts of Greater Los Angeles. That means I do really fun science, technology, engineering, arts, and math activities and programs. Today we're going to become citizen scientists by learning a very important scientific tool. It's not a microscope or a flask, but it's the scientific tool of observation. In this video, we'll test our observation skills by comparing two photos to notice quick changes. And later, we'll even take our observation skills on a census scavenger hunt. And if you're up for the extra challenge, you can try the Citizen Science Taste Challenge. This video will help you complete part one of the Think Like a Citizen Scientist journey for daisies, brownies, and juniors. For this video, you'll need about 15 minutes. That's two minutes for setup, about 10 minutes for activities, and about three minutes for cleanup. But if you need more time, go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're ready. Let's get started. The first way we're gonna challenge our observation skills is with a game of quick changes. All you need for this game is your observation skills and your memory. To play quick changes, I'll give you 30 seconds to study a photo. You'll have to remember everything you see. Pay special attention to objects, items, words, or colors. Then I'll show you another photo and you'll have to remember everything that's different or changed. Things can be added or missing, or they can be different colors. Let's take a look at the first photo. Remember, you have 30 seconds to make your observations. If 30 seconds sounds too fast, go ahead and pause the video for longer. Here's the first photo. Ready, set, observe. Great job. Now I'm gonna show you the second photo and I'm gonna give you a little hint. You're looking for five changes or differences. Ready, set, observe. Good job, scientists! Now let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two photos we just observed. How many changes did you find? How did you remember all your changes? If you forgot or didn't see something, what would have helped you observe or helped you remember? Wow, great job observing those quick changes! Many times scientists have to make observations really quickly before the environment, an object, or an animal changes or moves. Think about a scientist who's trying to observe the spots on a cheetah before it sprints away, or trying to observe stars and comets as they fly billions of light years away. Scientists also write things down so they don't forget their observations. We'll do that for the next activity so we remember ours. For the next activity, we're going to go on a census scavenger hunt to make observations about what we find. Let's prepare first. First, wash your hands with soap and water. Citizen scientists do this to keep themselves, their fellow citizens, and their observations safe and clean. Next, ask an adult for help to take any item for observation. When you're done, return items to where you found them. And last, thank your helpers. 
here's what we're looking for for our census scavenger hunt. One, an item you use in the kitchen. Two, an item you find in nature. If you can go outdoors, look for a fallen leaf or maybe a rock. Never take an insect or an animal out of its habitat and never break a growing plant. Instead, you can take photos. Third, anything that helps you sleep. It can be a blanket, a pillow or a stuffed animal, a nightlight, whatever helps you catch those Zs. And last, something to help you take notes. It can be a notebook and a pencil, a notes app on your phone or device, anything that helps you draw or take notes. Now pause this video, start hunting, and come back when you're ready. For these observations, we want to use as many senses as possible. So our sight, our smell, our hearing, our touch, and taste will lead for the citizen scientist taste challenge. We also want to ask ourselves a few questions to help us think. I'm gonna switch over so you can check out how I make my observations. So these are the items that I chose. I was able to go outside, but since the plant was still growing and I didn't want to pluck it, I went ahead and took a picture. Okay, let's get started with our observations. And remember, we're gonna use as many senses as possible to make observations about our scavenger hunt items. We're also gonna ask ourselves a few questions. So let's start with our kitchen item. So I'm gonna start with sight, so everything I see. Put C. So let's see. Let's see what color is it? So it's red, black, and silver. How big is it? So I'm gonna to try to compare this to something I've seen before, no. I do have this handy dandy little mat that has measurements on it, but if you don't have that, you can use a ruler or just kind of estimate or guess. So this is as big as like a ruler. So this is about, I'm gonna say about 12 inches. inches so about the size of a ruler what is the shape hmm so it's like a stick shape and then it turns into this like star bowl <laughs> I'm actually gonna draw try to draw a picture so I'm gonna say Handle. I'm just going to kind of make it wobbly. Have little details. Well, it's not the best drawing, but now I can go through and I can label this part's red, this part's silver, this part is black. Looks like a star bowl. That's what I'm calling it. Star bowl. Star bowl thing. All right, what else? Hmm. How is it powered? So it doesn't have anything where I can like plug in. So I'm going to say it's girl powered. Girl powered. Cool. Now what is it made of? So it looks like most of it is plastic. Maybe except for this little silver part right here, that might be metal. So I'm going to say it's plastic and metal. Cool. 
And what is it used for? This is normally used to like scoop up spaghetti. Um, it could probably be used as like a head scratcher or back scratcher, but I'm not gonna use it for that. Since it's already been used for spaghetti, we'll just use it for spaghetti. So, spaghetti. Okay, so that's everything that we see. Let's move on to sound. So I'm gonna make a little section for sound. Sound. So does it make a sound when I use it or turn it on? Well, when I make spaghetti and I scrape it against the bowl, sometimes it makes like a scrapey noise. But otherwise, it doesn't really make much of a noise. Maybe when you tap it. So I'm going to say scraping noise against like pots and pans. When I tap it with my finger, it definitely sounds like when you tap plastic. So we'll keep that plasticky sound. <laughs> okay, great. You can also use your phone's recorder or um, the sound capture to capture any sounds about any of your items too. Okay, so that's it for sound. We're going to move on to touch. So what does it feel like? It's definitely like smooth. Um, it's like a little rougher on the handle, but it's mostly smooth. I'm going to say smooth. Smooth feel to it. Is it warm or cold? Um, it's a little cool because I think it's plastic, so it's... A little cool from being in the drawer. I'd say it's cool. Is it light or heavy? It's definitely light, so that's good if you're trying to scoop spaghetti. Use the same process for your other scavenger hunt items. Here's the collection of the questions I asked, but feel free to add your own. Wow, look at all the observations we made. We use sight sound, and touch to collect information. If you're up for an extra challenge using taste, you can try the Citizen Scientist Taste Challenge. To take the challenge, ask an adult to prepare a secret snack for you. Use a bandana or a sleeping mask to cover your eyes and see if you can guess what the secret snack is. If you want an extra challenge, try plugging your nose and covering your eyes. That way you can only use touch to figure out your secret snack. This is a great challenge to do with tagalongs, brothers, sisters, and friends, or an adult. Great job today, citizen scientist. After you do something new, it's a good idea to think about what you learned, what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you want to learn about next. What did you think was fun and why? What did you think was difficult or challenging? For me, memorizing is challenging, so I like to write things down or draw pictures. If you or your Girl Scout like this activity, you may want to check out more badge and journey activities here and at Girl Scouts at home. Your troop leader can help you find the rest of the steps for the Think Like a Citizen Scientist journey for Daisies, Brownies, and Juniors on the Volunteer Toolkit or at the Girl Scout Shop at www.girlscoutshop.com.